This past week marked a big shift for our area and the fight against COVID-19. Both New York and New Jersey schools, they are coming off week one of no mask requirements for all students five and older, although there are some New Jersey schools continuing masking for now. Mayor Eric Adams here in New York City also ending the key to NYC program, which of course required proof of vaccination to enter restaurants and other venues. However, the vaccine mandate for the private sector that remains and then coming soon changes to the mask mandates on public transit. The nationwide requirement will likely ease by mid April. And as the city transitions to a new phase of the pandemic, one area of recovery and rebound, there's another change in leadership. New York City Health Commissioner Dr. Dave Choksi will step aside from his role as the city's doctor in just a few days. And I had the chance to speak with him earlier this week for one last time as he reflects on leading the city during an unprecedented hardship and what comes next for the city. So, Dr. Choksi, thank you so much for being back here on Fix on Politics. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Dan, as always. So before we get to our final look back as your time as commissioner, I do want to get you while we still have you as commissioner on a few pandemic related questions. One week down of the mask mandate being dropped for many areas, one week down to the vaccine and key to NYC going away. I know it's too early to tell and looking at numbers, but why were you so confident that this was the time to do that? Yeah, well, we thought about this um, carefully. Uh, we looked at a combination of what was happening with uh, transmission. You know, cases were significantly lower in New York City and had been sustained, you know, at a low level for a period of weeks, as well as the high vaccination rates. 77% you know, uh, of the entire population is fully vaccinated. 87% of adults are fully vaccinated. Those are the things that gave us, um, you know, some confidence in being able to relax some, not all of the protections, but uh, but some of them uh, right now. So you unveiled, Dr. Choksi, this color-coded system, right? Green for low, red for high. But I guess I'm looking for, are there specific metrics in terms of numbers that would put us not in the green anymore and go higher? What's a number that would say trigger red? We did align what we put out for New York City with um, the CDC's uh, measures. Uh, they're called community levels. Uh, and to move up through that, you look at uh, cases. So specifically, if you go above 200 cases per 100,000, that moves you up, uh, you know, out of the low level. And then we also look at impact on the healthcare system in terms of how many hospital beds are occupied by COVID-19 patients. Red, which you asked about, is, um, is really a place where I hope New York City will never return to. This is, you know, the dark days of March and April of 2020. Um, where we're seeing so much impact on our healthcare system uh, that there is strain that, you know, um, that affects it in a catastrophic way. So the alert level system is built to put in place measures uh, that prevent further escalation to hopefully never get to run. So briefly, Dr. Choksi, if we enter a zone that, say, is in green, and I really hope that we don't, again, that those dark days are behind us, would mask requirements or vaccine requirements, would that then come back into play? It's possible, and that's part of why we uh, laid out the alert levels as we did. Um, we do know that masks, um, as well as our vaccine requirements, have worked. Uh, and so these are tools that, um, you know, we should anticipate that we may have to reach for again. But like you, I hope we are through the worst of it and we don't have to. Um, but the virus has been formidable and wily, as we know, uh, and so it's certainly better to be prepared. Some obviously found this as a celebration. It was so great to see so many people back in restaurants again last week. But then there comes the private sector where the mandates still remain. Is there a timeline, Dr. Choksi, for dropping mandates for the private sector? And why not do it all at once? Uh, because we're not out of the woods. And particularly our vaccine mandates in New York City, they have been extraordinarily effective. They're why we got to the levels of vaccination that we did. And I have to connect it to the health outcomes that are related. Uh, we put out an analysis last week, collaborating with um, colleagues at Yale, that showed that in New York City, because of our vaccination campaign, uh, we were able to save about 48,000 lives, prevent about 300,000 hospitalizations, and avert about 1.9 million cases. Uh, so great. this is critically important and uh, you know, we, we shouldn't abandon the approaches uh, that got us to that level of prevention.
So briefly, is there a timeline for dropping the private or it's to be de determined? Um, there's no specific timeline. This is something that we're looking at, you know, uh, with uh, all of the different factors. Um, but the vaccine requirements in general, you know, will have a higher threshold uh, to roll back because vaccination is so critically important to building the wall of immunity that matters regardless of what variant is down the road. Obviously, there's been, you pay attention to the news. I know you do. There's been a lot of conversation around the under five and four in the classroom still, right? Is there a timeline for when those students can take off their masks? I know that they aren't able to get vaccinated, but timeline here for parents, is it before the school year ends, you think? I believe so. Uh, you know, the major distinction is that uh, kids under five are not yet eligible for vaccination, whereas those five and up are. Um, and, you know, these are our toddlers and infants. You know, these are people for whom any preventable suffering, a preventable hospitalization is something that we take very seriously. Um, but at the same time, you know, we uh, will look at all the data as we always do. Um, and this is something that's under active discussion. So, you know, I expect there will be some announcements uh, uh, in the coming weeks. Okay, and lastly on the pandemic, uh, briefly here, because I want to get to your time as commissioner, vaccines, you're a doctor, right? And what are we thinking? Is it going to be a yearly vaccine or too early to tell? Well, you know, we have to see how the virus continues to evolve. Um, and also how immunity wanes over time. Uh, I think it's a reasonable you know, assumption that we may have to uh, do it uh, on a yearly basis, just like um, the flu shot. At the same time, uh, this has been a marvel of science in terms of you know, how quickly things have changed. Scientists are also working on uh, you know, a vaccine that can cover all of the possible variants or even multiple types of coronaviruses. So I'm hopeful that that will come to fruition, and that could change the calculus with respect to how frequently a booster dose is needed. Got it. Uh, I want to get to your time as commissioner, Dr. Choksi. We saw you at the press conference in Times Square. You obviously got choked up. I'm sad this is one of our last conversations because you really led the city through a dark time. I got to ask, why step aside now, right as we're starting to see the positive side of this all? It's been, you know, the privilege of a lifetime uh, to, to serve in this role. Um, it's been extraordinarily intense, uh, and you know, right right now was um, was right for me personally and and professionally uh, to to take that step. Um, I do it with great confidence in uh, the team that Mayor Adams has assembled, including my successor, Dr. Ashwin Vasan, uh, and I just have to pay homage to the amazing public health heroes uh, at the health department, um, and they're gonna. They're going to keep New York City in good stead through thick and thin. It was such a difficult and critical time to have you as the leader of the health department during this pandemic, Dr. Choksi. How has it changed your life? And have you made life changes, really, from your time in office during the pandemic? Um, yes. Well, thank you for asking the question. And uh, it has indelibly you know, changed my life. This is uh, one of the most difficult things that I've ever done, and perhaps you know, one of the most difficult things that I'll ever do. Um, part of the privilege was getting to bear witness to so many New Yorkers' stories. You know, all of the tragedy and suffering and grief. I mean, I will uh, hold those in my heart uh, forever. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, th those are things that um, they'll stay with me uh, for uh, for for all of my days. Yeah, and you had a, a great team behind you, right? The health department. What comes next for you? Uh, cooking a lot of dinners for my wife, uh, which I owe probably hundreds at this point. Um, taking care of my folks, you know, who I haven't been as present for with respect to their uh, health issues. Um, I'll keep seeing my patients, uh, who I also care for deeply. Um, and I'm going to do a little bit of replenishment for myself as well. You know, all of us have gone through some degree of trauma over the past two years. Uh, and so, you know, I hope uh, other people will find um, a way to pursue some healing uh, through my story, too. Yeah, healing is certainly very important, Dr. Choksi. And, and I guess we'll end on a happy note. What is the first meal that you'll be making? <laughs> um, well, we will see. I make a, I make a pretty good dal, uh, which is like an Indian lentils dish. Uh, so I'll have to, you know, I've, I've gotten a bit rusty over the course of the pandemic. So you might not want to eat my very first, but the second batch, I promise, will be great.
Dr. Choksi, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your leadership during the pandemic. And I appreciate you always coming back to PIX11. I know I asked some very tough questions along the way, and you always did your best to answer them with a smile. And I know uh, I can be persistent in my questioning. So I do appreciate all the time you've given us. I appreciate you, Dan. Keep it up and thank you. All right, be well. We'll talk soon, okay? Thank you. Take care. Dr. Dave Choksi will step down this week. The next commissioner, Dr. Ashwin Bassan, he's a primary care physician and mental health expert from Columbia University. His first day on the job will be this coming Wednesday. We'll try to get him on this very program.